I created a brand new speedrun for Stardew Valley. I started speedrunning Stardew in February this year with Mines 50 speedruns and once I got pretty good at those, I moved on to Marriage and had a brief stint there so I played a couple of world records before buying out. In those 5 months of speedruns, I had one end goal in mind, make my own speedrun. Finally, while watching my friend Ethan do hat urchin resets on stream just a week or so ago, I came up with the idea for my speedrun. The goal would be to acquire an urchin, a top hat and a bridal veil, then don one of the hats yourself before placing the urchin and fish tank and giving it the other one. This run would be dubbed Urchin Marriage. So I quickly began writing this new speedrun but it became clear quickly that this wasn't going to be as simple as I first thought. To make a bridal veil I had to get a cloth and a pearl, which wouldn't be too difficult but the top hat was a different story. For that I would have to unlock Mr Cheese Casino and earn 8,000 chi coins, which isn't so bad but the prerequisite for it would be a little bit more tough. To unlock the casino I first need to unlock the desert by completing the vault in the community centre requiring 42,500 g as well as 4 other bundles beforehand to unlock the vault itself. I'd also need to complete the mysterious Mr Chi quest which calls for a battery pack, a rainbow shell, 10 beads and a solar essence. So all in all, to unlock the top part I would need to do all of the following. Complete the spring, summer and fall forage bundles in the community centre, complete either the adventures bundle in the boiler room or the summer crops bundle in the pantry, grow a lot of potatoes and blueberries to complete the vault, befriend Pam for a batchy pack, repeatedly check the beets during summer for a rainbow shell, complete a mines 50 speed run and unlock the desert by the middle of fall to buy beet seeds from the oasis and still have time to grow them, which is where the bulk of this so far 1 hour 45 minute runtime of urchin marriage comes in. After I had figured out everything I need to do, I wrote up a route to follow as I tried out the run. As I put it out, I grew more and more excited as I realised how well rounded and interesting the route was. There's a little bit of everything, except fishing, but I'm okay with that. So let's take a look at my first run of Urchin Marriage. Luckily, I had streamed my attempts at the speedrun because for some reason all of my local recordings look like this. I'll have to find a way to fix that. In my first run, I decided to make my character look like the opposite of an urchin since I thought it might be weird if we looked identical and got married, but what resulted was some kind of sickly looking Charlie Brown as my mod Susan called him. I couldn't see this for the rest of the run and it was actually extremely distracting. I started off by grabbing my parsnip seeds and moving my bed and TV close to the door. I cleared a small area on my farm, planting and watering my parsnips. On the second day, I watered my parsnips again before chopping 50 wood and refilling my watering can. On day 5, I crafted a chest with my wood, then realised the rain was going to mess me up a little since I can't unlock the community centre on a rain. Day. This wasn't a huge issue though as I could just do that another day. I harvested my parsnips and deposited one in the chest before exiting to the bus stop to harvest any forage in my hat. I tossed one daffodil and nine dandelions in the chest at home, saving one of each for the community centre and the spare dandelion for food for my mind's run later on. I had a lot of spare time before entering Pierre since I couldn't unlock the community centre and decided to check the trash. I found a cranberry sauce outside the saloon which would be an amazing source of energy for my mind's trip. At 9am I entered Pierre's and sold him 14 parsnips and my spare daffodils before buying 19 potato seeds. Since I do have spare money, really I could just buy extra and then plant them so I have extra money later on but for the first run at least I want to stick to the root. I planted my potato seeds before heading to bed. From here the plan was to water the potatoes on every day which it didn't rain but someone decided to interrupt me. Oh two centimeters too. Trying to decide how I feel about this. <laughs> it doesn't really help. I mean she went right in the middle so I mean that's pretty good. Thanks I guess. But at least I have less to water. I guess that's good. On day 9 a crow ate one of my potatoes and I realised that I hadn't added a scarecrow into my room. I resolved to make one later and went back to sleep. On day 11 my potatoes were ready to harvest which was bittersweet. Are you kidding? I get rain on the day when I don't have to water? I'm gonna scream. I prepared 30 pots for the potatoes I would buy on this day and then I realised Wait I can't open the CC again today. Oh my god. I got the materials to make a scarecrow and headed off to Pierre's for the second time. I planted my seeds and went back to bed. On day 17 I harvested my potatoes and added 18 more pots to the farm. It was finally a sunny day so I triggered the community centre cutscene and then I realised a big flaw in my route. Wait it's Wednesday I can't go to Pierre's. <laughs> you know that's actually like kind of a kind of a big issue I'm not gonna lie. Like that's like that's kind of a big problem. The issue is today is supposed to be my mind's day so I can't really plant the potatoes but I have to because otherwise it wouldn't be done in time. As I mulled over the issue Jake sent a chat message which changed everything. I did a couple urchins the battle build top like getting married is making me happy. <laughs> oh, you know what? I should have made it so that it's two it's two urchins getting married instead of me and an urchin getting married. I didn't change the run just yet, but this idea would not leave my mind. I was to just buy and plant my seeds before going to the mines and touch the plaque at the community centre since I'd forgotten to do it the day before. I bought 48 potato seeds, then I realised I forgot to bring Pam's parsnip with me, so I planted my seeds, grabbed the parsnip and ran back to town to give Pam her birthday gift. For context, I gave her this gift because when I have friendship with Pam, she could send me battery packs in the mail, which would be the easiest way for me to acquire one. I entered the mines about five in-game hours late and began hitting rocks and praying for ladders. I had a good amount of food so even if it was a bad luck day I was fairly confident I could make it at least 25 floors. I swept an amethyst from a gem node on floor 3 and kept hold of it to use as a gift on Emily's birthday later on in spring. I would use this relationship in hopes that Emily would send me cloth and potentially a sea urchin in the mail later. On floor 10 I was given a wooden 
one blade. You know what? I'll take one blade. That's fine. I'm okay with that. By the time I was at floor 11, my confidence was already wavering. It took me four in-game hours to make it down 10 floors, and that was pretty bad. It was clear that the minus 50 section of this run would be the make or break factor, but on floor 14, I broke a crate that would change my entire run. Oh! <gasps> Okay, never mind. Floor 14 is the best floor ever, and I love floor 14. On floor 20, I got a glow ring, which would be extremely useful on floors 30 to 40. Floor 24 had very generously given me a free ladder, so I managed to just about scrape my way down to floor 25 with no food and two energy left. I passed out to get back home quickly. I woke up on day 24 ready to harvest, but it's a <laughs> festival, so I can't even sell them today. Oh my god, this game hates me. I grabbed all of my potatoes and resigned myself to the fate of just being poor for the rest of the run. I sold some items from the mines to earn some extra money and went back to sleep. Oh, I actually have enough money. Let's <laughs> <laughs> on day 27, I went to the bus stop to grab forage and headed back to the mines. My goal for today was to reach level 50 of the mines before 11.30pm as I would be leaving then to give Emily a gift at the saloon. When I reached the ice falls, I had enough copper and coal to make 11 bombs, which wasn't a great amount but should be enough to take me 10 falls down, especially when I had 4 leaks left. But by the time I hit floor 46, I was really struggling. I only had a few bombs left and my energy was extremely low. The luck had seemingly disappeared after I reached these falls, which was really bad since rocks now required 3 hits to break instead of 1. Step in in my chat told me that I'd missed a slime at the start of the level, so I hurried back to kill it and by some miracle it dropped me a ladder and I finally made it out of floor 46. By floor 48 I was officially running on zero bombs, a winter room and a horseradish. It was looking pretty dire. I managed to swipe a ladder from a bat and headed down to the final floor. Floor 49 was covered in dust sprites which almost guaranteed me a monster ladder. I slammed it with my club but got nothing until I killed a bat at the top of the floor who finally helped me out. I descended to floor 51 to find a ghost to kill and take the solar essence from. After killing the ghost I got my reward and fled the mines, headed down to the saloon and gave Emily her birthday amethyst before passing out, ending the spring section at my first urgent marriage speedrun. On the first day of summer, I planted 76 blueberries. Most of this month consists of watering and sleeping, so I'll just be skipping to the days on which interesting things happen. On day 6, after watering my blueberries, I headed out to find the summer forage items. I found a spice berry and a sweet pea at the bus stop and decided to check for a grape on another day. I ran to the beach to check for an urchin and or a rainbow shell, but found neither. On day 13, I checked the bus stop for a grape with no luck. I grabbed a rainbow shell from the beach but still found no sea urchin. This wasn't too concerning though as I could get an urchin either from the beach farm or from Emily in the mill. On day 14, I had my first blueberry harvest. When I went to sleep, I hit level 5 farming and picked tiller. This was something I hadn't taken into account in my room and I made a note to amend this later. On day 20, I checked the backwards for a grape as I discovered that they were more common there than the bus stop. Luckily I found one on this day. I took a screenshot of my farm and checked the shores for a sea urchin. Unfortunately, there were none yet. On day 27, I had my final blueberry harvest. I made my way to Zindasap Forest to speak to the wizard, checking beach crates on the way. I was supposed to do this in spring, but I was delayed multiple times by rain and I forgot about it. I checked the beach for a sea urchin to no avail. I emptied my inventory and took all of the spring and summer forage into my pockets, ready for fall. On day 6 of fall, I went to the bus stop and collected a plum and a hazelnut. I headed to the mountain in search of a common mushroom but had no luck. I grabbed a blackberry from outside of the community centre and headed to Sintasap Forest where I finally found my common mushroom. I started donating my forage bowls to the crafting bundles in the community centre. Yeah, so... Remember how I said I had to complete 4 bundles to unlock the vault before? Well, someone, <coughs> Ethan, had told me I only needed 3, so I didn't prepare my 4th bundle, which was kind of a problem. That right there is called never trust anything Ethan says. <laughs> I guess probably the easiest thing would be just to get 10 batwings and a solar essence. I feel like that's the best. So I grabbed my club and pickaxe and headed back into the mines. Around 3 minutes later I had 10 batwings and a solar essence so I left the mines and completed the adventurous bundle in the boiler room unlocking the vault. I quickly completed the entire vault and headed to bed. On fall 7th I placed a chair outside of Pam's trailer to make it get to the bus stop faster. I prepared 10 plots for my beads and headed to Calico Desert buying the seeds, planting them and then going back to sleep. From here I repeatedly slept planning to leave on fall 23rd to begin watering the beads. I pushed this date back one day for each rainy day I got to minimise time spent watering. On day 28 I harvested my beads, then went back to bed not to wake up again until winter 15th. On this day I woke up and read all of my mail, hoping for a batchy pack from Pam and a cloth from Emily. Luckily I managed to get both without resetting the day at all. I got the rainbow shell and solar essence into my inventory along with the cloth, beads, batchy pack, pickaxe and hoe. I took my batchy pack to the tunnel beside the bus stop, placing it into the fuse box to start the mysterious Mr. She quest. I grabbed a sea urchin from beside the greenhouse and headed to the train platform, placing the rainbow shell inside the box. Next I placed the 10 beads in the Mrs. Fridge and took another trip to the desert, giving the dragon skeleton the solar essence. I went back to the farmhouse and examined the lumber, earning my casino club card. I made my way to the beach and went to forage farm until 4.10pm. I entered the mermaid boat at 5pm, watching the shore and completing the puzzle for the pearl. And completing the puzzle for the pearl. Um... Do I have to have the secret note? I don't have to have the secret note, right? Okay, you don't. Okay, the, the, what I have written down is wrong. 1543. 
Well, I definitely should have <laughs> checked the website because that definitely wasn't right. Little oh, shit, lying to me. After the fright of my life, I had the shrouded figure walk me home. I saw my winter forage and went to sleep until the next star drop luck day, which luckily was day 18. Firstly, I headed to Willy's and bought a small fish tank. Then, I used Emily's sewing machine to create the bridal veil using the cloth and the pearl. I entered the oasis in the desert, shot the Vanser, placed my fish tank and urchin, bought a ton of cheek coins, and began gambling. I decided to use the slots as the loss on the cards table could have devastating consequences on my cheek coins fund. Luckily, it wasn't long until. I bought the top hat from the casino shop, bumbled with the fish tank. No! How do I do it? How do I do it? And finished my first urchin yardage speed run with a time of 2 hours, 3 minutes and 4 seconds. I would tell you about my second run, but it would take much too long, and it wasn't too different, so let's just say, don't gamble kids. If I hit the jackpot right after it rolls over 2 hours, I'm gonna cry. Oh my god! I'm gonna be here until I pass away of old age. I can't believe this is the way you end the run. <laughs> You can have the best run ever and then just lose everything to this. I'm not gonna <laughs> PB because it won't give me anything. What is this? I've been here for like four minutes. But we're definitely not PB. <laughs> I hate this so much. If I had an auto clicker, I would put it on right now and just go get ready for bed while this goes. Oh my god. Just give me something. I'm losing my <laughs> mind. <gasps> oh. Oh my <laughs> I've created a monster. I was gambling for like 10 minutes. Moving swiftly on to the final run. This stream was done the day after the previous two runs, so I'd had time to fix up the run in quite a few areas, resulting in a pretty nice time save. I won't go over the entire run like I did with the first one since you know what's going on now, but I'll touch on some of the changes I made. On day 5, I harvested my past dips and collected the money from the getting started quest in my journal. I didn't take this 100g into account in my original route, so I added it in this time, as it would mean I had to grow less potatoes in the long run. I changed my route to be less specific on like how many potatoes to get, like there's no specific numbers mentioned, and I just think it's gonna work out better that way because I can sell things and get extra money and just judge how many potatoes I need to grow by how much money I have and how much money I need to have by the end. So by the end I need to have 5,280g. I changed the route a bit so that if you get an upgraded weapon you can do the the boiler room bundle like I did last time, the 10 battlings and the solar essence. And if you don't get an upgraded weapon you do the summer crops because I do think that the boiler room bundle will be faster but only if you get an upgraded weapon. After planting my first round of potatoes, I had the absolute luckiest streak of rain in history. As if we just got four days of rain in a row. That was crazy. Which is pretty awesome. Because I changed my route to be less specific on potato numbers, I managed to get 47 seeds in the second round instead of the 30 I bought in previous runs, which allowed me to never grow potatoes again for the rest of spring, making up the rest of the money later on by selling things like forage and yields from the mines. This saved me a lot of time. Despite not going to Pierre's, I still decided to gift Pam before going to the mines since I figured that that would save me more time than running all the way to the saloon at 11pm. It would also be much faster to pass out in the mines. The mines quickly proved that there would be no issue today, giving me a very early ladder on floor 1 and a free ladder on floor 2. In less than 2 minutes I reach floor 10, getting leather boots from the chest. This is actually really good as this usually signifies that I'll get a wooden club from the floor 20 chest. Club? Let's go! Which I did. I somehow managed to scrape my way down to level 35 in day 1 of the mines with no energy or food remaining by the end. It's a good job I gifted Pam earlier. On mines day 2, I reached level 50 by 1pm and grinded for 2 solar essences. And by 3pm I had everything I needed and ran back to the saloon to meet Emily. I gave her a topaz and went back to bed. One big difference in the route this time was the amount of blueberries I had to buy. This time, I taken into account the fact that I would hit level 5 farming and earn the tiller profession, allowing my blueberries to sell for 55g instead of 50. Because of this, I could buy 66 blueberry seeds instead of the previous 76. Significantly cutting down on watering time during summer. Went to summer around 47. <gasps> I'm like seven minutes ahead. This time, I managed to grab a sea urchin from the beach on summer 13th, saving me time on checking my farm shawl salon. On day 28, I harvested my blueberries and sold them all, resulting in 45,071g. This was less than I expected, but ended up being a fine amount. While donating my forage to the community center, I realized I'd made a mistake. <gasps> My solar essence and batwings are at home. I was supposed to drop them in the community center. Shit, I'm gonna have to run home. Oh, that's really annoying. After almost two minutes of time loss, I donated to the Botherman bundle and completed the vault. While resetting my mail for a cloth and a batchy pack, something happened. Still no cloth. Oh no, shit. No! I exited the game instead of exiting to the menu, so my run is no longer valid. But to be fair, it's not like that really mattered in the first place because this is not an official run. Eventually, I got a cloth and a batchy pack as well as a spare urchin. Because of this, I decided to buy a larger fish tank later on and go through 
through with Jake's suggestion of having two urchins get married. After getting the mermaid puzzle right on the first try, I had everything I needed for the final day of my run. Luckily, I managed to get a great look day on winter 17th and headed out to get my hats. I bought the large fish tank from Willy, grabbed the bridal veil and set off to the casino. After only around two minutes of gambling and a perfectly timed raid, I won big on the slots and finished up my fastest run to date. I finished the run with a time of 1 hour, 44 minutes and 52 seconds. There's still plenty of time saved left in there and I intend to keep on running. I'd love to see other people try it out too, so I'll link my route doc in the description below if you'd like to have a go yourself. If you do, please let me know in the comments, on Twitch or on Discord so I can have a look. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed Urchin Marriage. I stream Stardew Valley pretty often on Twitch so you can follow me there for more speedruns, link will be in the description. Thanks again and I hope to see you another time.